I get a lot of comments and emails regarding the construction of my antenna designs, and I enjoy reading them. Like myself, many of you like to experiment and use my designs as a starting point for your own concepts and modification. One of my designs that's had quite a few suggested mods is the multi-directional octagonal antenna. In this episode, I'm going to see if some of these mods actually can make a really good antenna even better. So let's hop to it. I designed the octagon antenna as a longer range multi-directional antenna, eliminating the need for an antenna rotator or having to link multiple antennas together. In my area, it works very well, pulling in more stations than many of my other designs and outperforming most of the commercial antennas I had bought. I published its builds episode back in November of 2022, and quite a few of you have built it. Many of you have commented on what a great design it is and how well it works for you too. But some of you just can't leave well enough alone and have contacted me with your own mods that you've done to my original design. I actually love and encourage this. After all, the best innovations are often built upon the work of others. Recently, I was contacted by one of my viewers, Tom H., who had built an octagon antenna with a few modifications. In his letter, he wrote, I would love to see a comparison between your design and the modified design to see if the changes really did make a difference. He asked if I could make one based on his design and compare them head to head. Well, that seems like a logical request, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to build another octagon antenna based on all the dimensions of the original and only do the modifications that Tom suggested. If you want to build your own octagon antenna, I will put a link at the end of this video. Multi-directional antennas like this may not always be the best choice for every situation. Since they pull in simultaneous signals from many directions, that can lead to interference issues. For example, if you have two stations broadcasting the same frequency, let's say channel 34, the TV's digital tuner will normally lock onto the stronger signal, ignore the weaker one, and you will get a watchable channel. But sometimes the stations are picked up with signal strengths that are very close in power. They could interfere and cancel each other out, and then you could end up not being able to watch either one. Another issue with multi-directional antennas is, since they receive signals from all around, they can't concentrate in any specific direction. So if you have a station that's far away that you want to watch, these antennas aren't the best choice. You may need a longer range, more focused antenna design. Naturally, I do have some episodes that show you how to construct antennas like those, like the double hoop antenna with reflector or the pie pan reflector antenna. Links will be in the comments. I have had unconfirmed reports of people using this antenna to get stations much farther than that, so a lot depends on your particular location. Tom says he likes this design as he's in between two markets that are parallel from each other and about 40 to 70 miles away. He wrote that his octagon is receiving 100 channels. I always recommend checking out the website rabbitears.info before deciding on an antenna design. There you can find out all sorts of easy to understand information including all your available channels, transmitter signal strengths, location and direction, and much more. Yes, I have an episode that shows you how to navigate and use this great resource, and yes, I'll include a link to that too. I guess now's the time where I should remind you to subscribe to my channel. That way you can see all the episodes I've already mentioned and also keep up with all the new content like this episode. I always appreciate new viewers. The first mob Tom did was to change the element wire from 14 gauge to 8 gauge solid wire. That makes sense as 8 gauge should have more capability. In my episode where I test different element metals and gauges, I prove that this is correct, so right away this newer antenna should work better. I've actually never built any antenna with 8 gauge wire. The heaviest I've used is 10 gauge solid copper wire. In all of my tests, I have found that I really didn't get any better reception once I used anything heavier than 10 gauge wire. I did say that I was going to follow Tom's design, so I will use 8 gauge wire. One slight change is the 8 gauge wire I have on hand is stranded, not solid. For use in an antenna, using comparable solid versus stranded wire doesn't make any difference in performance. Stranded wire is also much easier to work with than bend versus solid 8 gauge. 
I did have another viewer, the Dad Life OG, who also did a modified octagon antenna build, and he told me he used six gauge wire for his element, as he stated, it is highly broadband. He also told me it was difficult to feed into the antenna pipe. I bet it was. Now that I have the antenna itself built, I have to make the reflector. This has been part of the construction that generates the most questions and comments. The biggest one is why I would choose solid aluminum flashing for the reflector, as it will create a lot of wind resistance. In my original episode, I did acknowledge that issue and clearly stated that my antenna was to be mounted inside of my attic, where the wind isn't going to be a factor. I also recommended that for outside use, you should make the reflector element out of this material, one half inch galvanized hardware cloth, or as some of you call it, heavy screening. This stuff will reflect TV signals about as well as a solid aluminum sheet, but with almost no wind resistance. Since Tom used aluminum flashing in his build, I will also be using aluminum flashing. Yes, he allowed for it in his design and used a very robust pipe for his mast. There has also been a lot of questions as to why I use a 4 inch space between the reflector and the antenna element. If I do the calculations based on standard formula, I should probably use a spacing somewhere around 5 inches, not 4. Prior to making my final octagon antenna design, I actually spent months experimenting and prototyping different concepts. Each was tested and I kept tweaking until I found the design that seemed to work best, at least for my location. In my testing, I found out that 5 inches just didn't work, but 4 inches did. I don't know why, but it does. Here is another modification from Tom, where mine is 5 inches wide with 1 inch upper and lower wings and a 3 inch center area. His is 6 inches wide with each section 2 inches wide. Tom also makes an effort to bend his wings so that they aim more directly at the element wire. His concept here is to possibly enhance the reflected signal. Many people have commented as why I didn't do that on my original design. I honestly didn't think aiming the wings would do much to the total reception. In my original design, the wings were bent down at about a 45 degree angle, not to enhance the signal reflection, but simply to stiffen the reflector panels. All right, I may be wrong about this. I never tested anything other than my original reflector design, and I may have missed out on an opportunity, and I am anxious to find out. During final assembly, I will not glue in the main mount or the side poles to hold the reflector in place. This will allow me to swap out and test different reflector configurations, so watch until the end for all the results. Here they are, side by side. The old design versus the new updated design. How will each one do and how do they compare? Well, let's find out. Before I run these tests, I want to mention that the weather in my area is currently not great for over the air reception. We've been having a lot of rain and very high humidity. As our home is nestled in woods, all the wet plants and tree leaves are suppressing a lot of TV signals. I'm going to start by hooking up and testing the original design. As always, I use a pneumatic tuner to display the receiver signal strengths. From there, the signal is fed into this 24 inch TV via an HDMI cable. I lock the antenna into the test mass and orient the terminals like this. Almost all multi-directional antennas have weaker reception areas, so to be fair, I want to be sure each antenna gets tested in the exact same orientation. I run a channel scan and record the results. In particular, I log the total received channels and the signal strength for each channel. After I do the first test run, I rotate the antenna about 10 degrees and repeat the test. I want to find out the sweet spot in my aiming, so I repeat the procedure five different times, each time changing the rotation by about 10 more degrees. This angle gives the best result, so I lock the antenna in place and run the test again. Now it's the modified octagon's turn. I lock it into the mast at the optimum position and run the same test on it. Next, I compare the numbers, and the results are interesting and surprising to me. First, I'll review the results for the original octagon antenna. 
This was built with a 14 gauge copper element and a 5 inch reflector that was made with a 3 inch flat area and 1 inch wings. As I mentioned, the reflector wings weren't aimed at the element. This version received a total of 36 channels and sub-channels. Signal strength varied from a low of 44% for channel 62 all the way up to a high of 90 for the powerful stations like channel 5. Overall picture quality was very good with only minor pixelation on the weakest channels. The modified octagon has three major differences. The element is 8 gauge wire. The reflector is 6 inches wide made in three 2 inch sections and the reflector wings are at least attempted to be aimed towards the element wire. After running the channel scan, I was surprised to see that it also had received 36 channels and sub-channels, exactly the same as the original design. When I compared the signal strengths, again they were almost exactly the same readings for each channel as the original design. Even though the modified octagon had a much heavier element, which should enhance reception, in testing, there really wasn't a significant difference. One possible reason could be the reflector. Even though I have tried to aim each wing at the element, maybe I'm not being precise enough. Also on the newer design, the flat area is only two inches wide versus the three inch wide section on the original. I'm curious to what effect the reflector is having on the reception. I made this newer octagon with a removable reflector, so I'm going to test it with the reflector removed. I lock it in the same position and run another channel scan. Without the reflector, it was only able to receive 31 channels and sub-channels. That's five channels less than with the reflector installed. Signal strength was also affected with the weakest receivable channel dropping to 36%. A couple channels had signal dropouts. I continued to test the two octagon antennas 10 times each and the results were always similar. The next day, the weather was better and both antennas were able to pick up 39 channels. Overall, in my tests, there just isn't a significant performance difference. While I'm doing these tests, I have another viewer suggested modification. A few of you have suggested bonding the reflector to the shield terminal of the matching transformer. You said that this would make the aluminum act as more of a ground plane and enhanced reception. I jump for a connection and rescan again, and the results are, as far as I can tell, exactly the same as without it. Well, while I'm at it, I might as well bond the lead terminal just to see if that does anything. And again, nothing. Same amount of channels, same signal strengths as before. Maybe I'm not doing this right. Let me know in the comments. My testing is done, and I did not find any appreciable difference in performance between either antenna. I am not going to say that there would never be differences. In a different location, a different time of year, different time of day, or different weather, there might be much different results than these. The best thing I like about Tom's design is the use of a heavier wire element. If I were to rebuild this again, I'd probably use a 10 gauge copper wire element rather than the 14 gauge of my original construction. I've shown in a past episode that 10 gauge is normally superior to lighter gauges, but it's still fairly easy to use and not too expensive. I'd like to thank Tom for his suggestions, and again, I'd like to encourage everyone to modify any of my designs as they see fit. I will be keeping both of these antennas and will continue testing them. If you have any other ideas or mods, please let me know. Maybe yours will be featured in a future episode, too. If you like this episode, then you may like this one I just mentioned about testing different element materials. Click on this handy link to watch it next. Until next time, keep watching TV.